Hey everyone, this week I'm opening up the age-old wheel debate again, and I'm specifically going to be suggesting some tests that you can do with your robot to determine which type of wheel is best suited for your competition robot. Back in June, I went to the Mini Maker Fair in Port Jefferson, and I met with Chris Baker, who's the coach of team number 92, the Seaford Sea Lions. And they're a team that's locally based in my community, and I've talked to them in person before. The first time was when I was at an FTC team, and uh, Chris recognized me from one of my videos. This most recent time, I met him at the Mini Maker Fair, and we talked about his experience with FLL, and he suggested some two tests that he and his team did to determine which wheels were most effective for their FLL robot. And that's what I want to share with you today. I'm going to be showing you the tests that the Seaford Sea Lions used to determine uh, which wheels would be best for their robot. So hopefully then you can use them for yourself and uh, experimentally determine which wheels you think would be best for your own competition robot. By the way, if you're wondering where I got this hat, uh, this was a hat that the Sea Lions gave me. As you can see, it's a Sea Lion hat. They named me an honorary Sea Lion, so thanks for that. The two tests that I'll be demonstrating today are a weight pushing test and an incline test. And both of these are primarily concerned with measuring the relative traction of each tire. The first test is a weight pushing test, and you can take an empty shoe box and put increasing amounts of weight inside of the box and have your robot push it and you can see the point at which the robot can no longer push the weight. As you can see, 3 pounds is about Sirius's limit, and 5 pounds definitely won't move. And this allows you to test your tire's traction. One additional note is that it is imperative that you test your robot on the actual FLL mat that you'll be using this year. And the reason is because you're testing the tire's traction, and you want to know the traction as it pertains to your FLL robot. If you're testing your robot's traction on tile, that's great, but it's not really relevant because you're not going to have an FLL match on a tile surface. So make sure you're always using the actual surface of the mat to test your wheels. The second test is the incline test, and for this you'll need to make a ramp, which is actually pretty simple. What I've done is I've taken a large flat piece of cardboard and anchored it at one end with a dumbbell. And underneath I have a shoe box also full of weight that you can push back and forth to adjust the incline of the ramp. And the farther in you push the shoe box, the steeper you make the ramp. Finally, you'll have to drape the FLL mat over the ramp for the same reason that I said before, because you want to test the traction on the actual FLL mat surface. The incline test is yet another method for comparing the relative traction of different types of tires. As you may have guessed, you'll be using that ramp that you just built and adjusting its incline and increasing it over time to find the maximum angle that your robot's tires can climb. And of course, when you've reached that angle, your robot's tires will lose traction and it won't be able to drive up the ramp anymore. If you're testing different types of tires, you should record the maximum angle that each type of tire can climb, so then you can compare them and see which one has the best traction. I'd like to take one last moment to thank all of the members of the Seaford Sea Lions for devising these tests and allowing me to share them with you today. Thanks for watching my tutorial this week. If you found it helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every week. If you have a suggestion for a tutorial, be sure to submit it in the comments section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.